And all of Central Iowa, welcome to Max World Live. Max World is your world. Every day we talk about the issues and topics that matter most to you. And as always, it's your voice we want to hear in Max World. So join the conversation by calling 515 244 0077. And now, here's the host of Max World Live, J. Michael McCoy. All right, good afternoon, seven minutes after the hour, 28th day of January in the Lord's year 2016. Where were you 30 years ago today? Is that right? 8696-9606-0616. Yep. January 28th, 38 years ago, Space Shuttle Challenger. Not 38. Huh? 30. 38. No, 30. 30. 30. It was, it was, it was January 28th, 1986. Yes. All right. Thank you, Frank. And uh, it was that day, and I'm just saying, where were you? I was sitting in John Walsh's True Value store with his wife, Sue, and we were watching the little TV on top of the file cabinet. And I pointed at the TV, and I said, Sue, I think the, the, the space shuttle just blew up. And she looked up, and it, it remember that, that look? It had the smoke going all the different ways. And then NASA, uh, back in the days when you could actually depend on the news being true, NASA came back a couple days later and said that the... The capsule had survived the accident, but fell into the water, and all the astronauts were gone. And for some reason, they could never recover that capsule, and I've never figured that out. Well, you know, from I was at the crime lab, been, had been there for seven years, but when it hit the water, it was just like hitting concrete. Oh, is that what when it was? it came down, yeah. Because there was no parachute to it. No. You no. you were at the crime lab at NASA when this happened? Yeah, for seven years. Really? Yes. Why didn't I know that? I don't know. <laughs> I guess I thought you had lived here in Iowa all your life. No. No, I was working at the crime lab. That's in, what I said. I in was, Florida? No, 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 no. Here. Oh, here? Here. Okay. Yeah. And that when that when that thing hit, so it didn't sink to the bottom; it just disintegrated. I think it did. I think it just broke apart when it hit the ground. When it hit, I said hit the ground, hit the water, same as hitting the ground. Why is water that hard? That doesn't make. I mean, logically, that doesn't make sense. You stick your finger into water, and there's no, there's no resistance at all. Yeah, but when you're coming down at the speed they were coming down, they were pretty high up. That water just doesn't give that easy. Like when you're close to it, you know, diving yeah. in. Yeah. No. It's the difference between somebody doing a belly flop versus uh, a dive. Yeah. If you hit it with your belly, it's going to hurt. Yeah, but going at whatever, 750 <laughs> miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Just, man, it just disintegrated. It. Well, that was 30 years ago today. The space uh, shuttle program was, uh, I think it was forever more hurt after that. I really don't think it ever had the momentum. And we don't have man. Uh, uh, space flights now, do we? Or I guess we do. We go up to the space station. But didn't Russia take us up last time? Well, the, yeah, we we're yeah. piggybacking. Yeah. But but then we had a then we have two other Challenger or not Challenger, but space shuttle shuttle uh, accidents. Yeah. You remember that one that broke apart coming down back into the atmosphere, and you just saw all these just. Fragments? Well, there was one that 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 disintegrated over Texas, and they warned right. you not to pick it up, but any parts up because they'd arrest you. Right. But then there was something else where something was going up, and some of the tiles came back and hit something. Remember some tiles coming off of... See, that's funny. I don't remember any of those. I remember the Challenger, but I don't remember losing anybody else. Oh, yeah. There was another shuttle break. Well, up. you remember the school mm-hmm. teacher that went up. Sally right. Ride. She, right. was on Chal- she was on Challenger. Right. She was Challenger. Yeah. Sally mm-hmm. Ride was that school teacher. Uh, not right. Chris, well, Krista McAuliffe was the school teacher. Oh, that's teacher. right. She McCall was the school teacher. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's funny. I don't remember those other two. That's terrible. I don't remember. All right. Let's get to our business today. Later on, a young lady by the name of Heather. She's just like you and me. She's, she's a mom. She lives in a small community surrounding Des Moines. She feels that her government is shoving a bond issue down the throats of the electorate. And she, she wants to talk about it. 
and I've always told you this is your show, not mine. Okay, it's Max World, but you live in it. And when you're passionate about something, I want to hear about it. And you're welcome to come on the radio as long as it's not uh, slanderish. I'm not interested in slandering anybody, even a city official, unless it's just blatant that they've done something wrong. If they've done their job and you don't agree, there is no reason to slander someone. That's why they're on the city council or the government or whatever there is. This is not a, a platform to slander someone. If there's slandering to be done, that's my job. <laughs> but I'm not going to let you do it. But anyway, you're always welcome on this show. Just contact me through email or Facebook or call me. I don't care, however you want to get a hold of me. Come up to the sixth floor of the Merle Hay Mall Tower and ask for Frank. All right, Chris Kramer is here. He wrote a book, Pass the Test, Putting God First, Feeling His Presence, and Doing the Right Thing in a Complex World. Observations from a Reluctant Author is the co-title. And chapter 124 is called Separation of Church and State. And I've asked Chris, given that we're just on the eve, on the eve, on the eve, on the eve of the Iowa caucuses 2016, I've asked him to join us and share some of his thoughts. And he's going to read chapter 124, Separation of Church and State. Chris? Uh, Chapter 124. The main reason for the search for the... the main reason for the search, the search for the founding of the United States of America was so that its citizens could worship God freely. The founding fathers made it clear that we have a culture based on faith in God through Jesus Christ. Look at a dollar bill in your pocket and you will see in God we trust. In many of their writings, they said you cannot have morals without faith. If no docu- in no document that they wrote was there any verbiage declaring the separation of church and state. This is a recent phenomenon over the last 60 years or so when we had some Supreme Court justices take Thomas Jefferson's writings out of, the, out of context. This is similar to how people take a few words out of the Bible and use them without understanding the full context. We must understand everything in the Bible within the context of the Bible. The Founding Fathers wanted the Bible to be in every classroom and its virtues and morals to be taught to all of its citizens. The separation of church and state was simply meant to keep government out of the picture and not allow officials to dictate what and how religion was to be taught. All were free to choose their own religion. We now live in a country that has become corrupt. It seems that some leaders have forgotten that God is always watching no matter where they are and what they're doing. He knows our minds and hearts. The founding fathers and previous great presidents warned this could happen if we remove the principles of the teachings of God. It has always been up to us as individuals, parents, and Americans to teach these principles. But when our government interferes in our schools, courts, and businesses, we need to, then we need to be more vigilant and step, step it up ourselves. It is easy to put this on our churches, but it really begins at home. Go back to the writings of the Founding Fathers and teach the youth of America what they wrote and stood for. Teach why this great country was established and and never be afraid to talk about God and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Our whole culture needs to change to the way the country was intended to move forward. It is no surprise that after the Supreme Court took our Founding Fathers out of context that many of America's problems escalated to unprecedented heights. Murders, major crimes, teen pregnancies, drug abuse, abortion, many other problems all increased exponentially. Miracles happen when God is involved. When people have faith, they do what is right. Get involved and teach the Bible and its truths. If we all begin to do this as our founding fathers wanted, we will turn around a lot of the problems that are present in our society. As great leaders of our country have stated, we get the government we deserve. When we stop voting and stop, and stop teaching God's principles. When we allow radicals to dictate to us, allow government to determine our rights as humans, disregard godly morals, become apathetic to what goes around, on around us, and stop having faith in God, then we will get the government we deserve. We get elected leaders who believe they are above the law in how they lead, and we get a corrupt and dark and scary country. Remember, charity comes from within and cannot be forced upon us. When we follow Jesus Christ, We will look out for those around us. Use the gifts, talents, and blessings God gave to to bring those around us closer to God. Remember, God's love for us is unconditional. It is never too late for us 
or anyone we know. That is what is so great about our Father in Heaven. He's waiting for us to join his team and will never give up on us. Don't wait or procrastinate. Pass the test. Live a life of faith and share it with everyone. Don't let government or others persuade, you, persuade us to keep quiet or not do good things for others. Everything starts with each of us individually. I think the lesson that was supposed to be learned there is that our, our founders founded this nation on freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. And, I, and, I and we had learned our lesson from the, from the past with the papacy, with the Church of England. We didn't want that in the United States. So we weren't against religion. We just didn't want church and state collusion. Correct. That's the way I, that's what I believe as well. Chris Kramer is our guest. Uh, he is the author of the book, Pass the Test, Putting God First and Feeling His Presence. We've been reading a couple chapters today. We'll read you one more uh, when we come back. I think it's incredible how the church, and that's me, so I'm pointing a finger at me, mm -hmm. has allowed the, the anti-Christians to change what Frank just said. And we've allowed it because it's not what the Constitution says. You do not have freedom from religion. You have freedom of religion. How have we failed on that? Why have our pastors failed from the pulpit to stand up with a hardcore, you know, fist on the table to say, stop it? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know either. Every time some atheist wants to put his foot down on God in the public square, we stand by and go, okay, duh. Well, there, there's just something, there's something, well, you know what it is, it's evil. It's driven by the accuser. It's not really of man, it's of the accuser and his minions, and for some reason, we get this whole turn the other cheek thing all wrong. I agree. Yeah, all right. One more chapter from Chris's book to help you this afternoon, and later, Heather. She wants to put her foot down and say, stop it. There's a bond issue in her community, and she wants you to know about it. That's next, live here on The Truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coach with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there.
Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Zero nine zero nine nine three. that's the text line, the Service Master Truth text line, and you can text us and tell us what you're thinking today, and you can also call in and let us hear your voice at 515 244 0077 later heather is in there's a bond issue in her community just like there's a bond issue in your community and she isn't going to take it anymore and she wants you to know why it's not really about the bond issue in her community it's about us the church standing up and saying that's it we're done oh you know but you got to turn the other cheek and uh, you know separation from church and st-. no it's not what it says does heather want to say no to government control yes that's what I say. All right. Chris Kramer is our guest. Passed the test. That's his book, Putting God First, Feeling His Presence with the uh, caucuses just around the corner. He wanted to come in and share the parts of the book that he felt uh, directly represented uh, the government. And this one could be no better. Uh, or this one could be the best. Chapter 43, Government is Not God. Chris, go ahead. The United States has been heading down a road that I believe is leading to its destruction. Our government has been injecting itself into as the problem solver to all problems. Whenever anything happens, good or bad, our government has an opinion as to how we should think and act. Turn on the TV news and we will nearly always hear a piece about our federal government commenting or complaining about something that is happening. The problem, as I see it, is that if they can identify a problem, they can feel free to use their power to intervene or interfere and try to solve it. Obviously, our government provides services and laws we need. But by and large, they are not needed if we are following Jesus Christ. Where do you turn if you perceive something to be wrong? Do you have a support system you believe in? Do you have unwavering faith in God? When our country was established, our founding fathers put their faith in God. George Washington made a covenant with God to bless our country as long as we put him first in our lives and realized everything we have comes from him. In that day, laws were written after reading scripture and with God in mind. Laws were to be written so everyone could understand them. If the written laws were too lengthy to be understood or comprehended, they didn't pass because all of God's people needed to be able to comprehend them. Look at God's commandments. They are perfectly understandable. Imagine if our government leaders put Jesus Christ first to help them come up with their solutions. I think we would be better off as a society. I also believe it is up to us as individuals to have unconditional faith in God and create our own local support systems to help us. Church, neighbors, community are there for us to turn to when we need help. When we have to do this, we, we won't need someone in Washington, D.C. to fix our problem. I encourage you to find and be part of a support system. I have been fortunate to find mine in West Des Moines, Iowa. Pass the test. Everything comes from God. He is God and not those in Washington, D.C., the right answers come from God, so put him first in your life. The book is Pass the Test, Putting God First and Feeling His Presence. That was a whole chapter. And so I'm encouraging you to pick up this book, and especially guys. This book is not written gender-specific, but guys have shorter attention span than most other people, like girls. And these chapters are no more than two pages, maybe three pages long. And so it's easy to sit down um, and, you know, run through a chapter. Uh, maybe this is uh, some uh, uh, reading while you're taking care of business in the morning. You know, a lot of times that's where we read. Uh, but I'd encourage you to get the book. It's Amazon.com. It's also at Lutheran Church of Hope um, at our bookstore. I have about a half a dozen conspiratorial type folks on my Facebook friend list. Um, what's your opinion on this uh, question? Some of them feel that the government almost creates all disaster 
uh, particularly, let's say the uh, you know uh, what led up to the Patriot Act. Mm-hmm. We go to war with somebody precisely. They advocate the idea that we go to war with someone precisely with the idea that we're going to snowball Americans so that we can actually take their rights away by showing them they need protection. They need the government to protect them. I do agree that government will tinkle and interfere in things to gain control. But do you believe the more conspiratorial end that government, in essence, is really doing everything to grasp control? No, I I don't. I I think they want to control us, so they will take anything that happens in this world. Yes. Well, you remember the, the the statement by Rahm Emanuel, he never met a like a disaster Correct. they didn't like. In other words, they're looking for opportunities to grab control. Correct. But some folk will take it to the to to the extreme to say that not only do they look for opportunities, but they're creating opportunities mm-hmm. to take control. Yeah, I don't think they create them. I mean, life happens. So there, there's good and bad out there. They just find the bad. And honestly, if when you have God first, when you put God first, these problems, you can, you can work them out. But when people don't have that, they look to something else to solve their problems. And that's where government has stepped in happily to answer every problem there is out there. And then when they try to answer those, unfortunately, the, the consequence is they create more problems and then they have to fix those. And so it becomes a snowball. So I don't think they, they don't create them, but when they go to fix something, they make something else worse usually. Yeah. And that's how we got into this problem. Well, it's like when you go to rectify racism, for example, affirmative action, you end up inevitably discriminating against another group because you're trying to remedy discrimination. And in that remedy, in that remedy, you create more discrimination against another group. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right. Um, caucus is Monday. Um, you're going to caucus. Yes. If you want to share who you're going to caucus for, please do tell us why, uh, uh, the podium is yours. So whatever, whatever you want to do. Well, I appreciate it, Mac. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think the Republicans are blessed with quite a few great candidates. Um, and I have studied them quite closely. My favorite by far is Ted Cruz. Um, I think he's everything a Republican's ever dreamed of. Uh, the establishment doesn't like him. They don't get along with him. They, they make up things about him. So he, McCain doesn't like him. Uh, you, you've got people like that, that, that in the bushes, they all say, no, I, we can't have that guy. Well, that's what we want. We want somebody that's not going to get along with him. We want somebody that's going to step in, and especially somebody that wears God on their sleeve. Where's Jesus Christ on their sleeve? And that's what he does. And he's in, he knows what the system's about, but he hasn't been there long enough to be corrupted by any stretch. He's never made a, he doesn't make deals with those people. And so I'm, I'm a big fan of his. We've, there's one, I, I cannot, I'm not a big Trump fan because he's, he's all about himself. And that job's about serving others. It's, it's about us as Americans. It's not about him. And he's putting himself first. And we've already got somebody in the office, in the White House that does that. Yeah. And also somebody that thinks they're above the law. They can just write anything in. You don't think Trump wouldn't do that himself? If he, if he thought something, you don't think he'd just pen, it, pen in an executive um, decision and, and then let him yeah. try to go change it? You know, I, I, when Trump first talked about running for president, I was all for him. Because I'm a business guy, and, I'd like to, and I've said it a hundred times. I just want to see once, just what would happen. You know, Forbes, Romney. No, they're not the slickest guys in the world, but... And then comes up Mr. Slick. Mm -hmm. He knows how to do it. He knows how to talk. But when we sat there at the uh, family leader uh, event last, what was that, Frank? It was uh, the summer. May. All right. And when Frank Luntz asked him, do you ever ask God for forgiveness? And he says, no, I just take care of things myself. Well, then I began to wonder. And then he decided it was important that he tell us that he was a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, that he was a Christian. And I don't try to judge other people's faith, but we are called to be fruit inspectors. Mm -hmm. And little by little by little, I began to see a stupid written across my forehead that he wanted me to think that he was okay because he knew something out of two Corinthians. (laughs) And last weekend, he lost me completely. 
when he stood up and he said, you know, Mac, even if I went out in the streets of New York and shot somebody, you'd still follow me. I dispute he said that. And you don't think- I, well, Fra- Frank, Frank thinks that he was quoting a reporter. But a there's detractor. No evidence of that. He was quoting a detractor. There's no evidence of that. He was reading when he said it. He reads everything when he <laughs> says. Um, and, and now, you know, this guy that said he could go toe to toe with Putin and Iran and everything else. And now he backs down from little Megyn Kelly. Yeah. Um, and I'm I am thankful I'm thankful that I have an honest enough relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that somehow through the Holy Spirit, he let me know this was not the guy that I should be caucusing for. Now, the challenge is I don't know who to caucus for. Right. I mean, I've been on and I'm not going to call it a bandwagon, but and, and people who listen to this station, I don't think I really ever sat on that bandwagon. Did I, Bob, for no. Trump? No. I mean, no. I, I, because I don't believe my, I, first of all, I won't endorse anybody. Because my, if you're going to vote for somebody because I endorse them, you need help. <laughs> you need more help than I do. I'm nobody. I'm just another guy like you. I just happen to have a can in front of my mouth that collects my sound and delivers it into your radio. But I, I got to be honest. I like Jeb. Mm -hmm. I I, I think when all the the dirt and everything falls, and we'll know this after Super Tuesday, I think Jeb is going to be top two or top three. And then I think we're going to go to convention and we're going to be brokered. Well, you know, he has the most money. Yeah. But here's the thing that I don't know about your guy. Mm -hmm. And his dad was in here yesterday, and, man, I'd vote for his dad in a heartbeat. Mm Mm-hmm. You know as good as I do, by the time we get to South Carolina, Trump and his Christianity will be dropped in a bucket somewhere and kicked to the road. I hope true. I hope Cruz doesn't do that. I hope he's not pandering to us in Iowa because we're 43% evangelical. Because once we get to South Carolina, yeah, they're kind of evangelical, but they're more Baptist. Yeah. And then when we get into Super Tuesday, faith is not going to be a concern of all for anybody. Once you grab up Florida and Ohio and some of those big states, and when you get to California, you better never mention Jesus because they'll vote against you. I think you'd be surprised, though. I, I, I think, and I, number one, I followed Cruz for a lot of his career. So I, he's, always had, oh, okay. he's always worn that on his sleeve. Okay. That's, that's always been a first. Well, I'm glad to hear that because, I mean, I, I don't know anything about Ted Cruz until yeah. he ran for president. Right. Uh, he always said that on, his, on their dinner table was the Constitution and the Bible. Yeah. So, um, but I... He, uh, I, he won't back down, and I, I like the fact that he always brings it up, and he will keep bringing it up, and our country needs to hear that. Did you see the Rubio testimonies that were off the cuff? I, and I did, yeah. Man, that impressed me. It was good. It was yeah. good. The only problem I have with him is that— He's too short? <laughs> no. <laughs> he no, time in NFL football games. <laughs> that, he, that he went to—he worked with Schumer and those guys on, on the immigration bill, and that's, we've got to stand up for our— as a Republican follow, I'm a Republican. You stand up for those values. And when we move too far to the left to try to acquiesce, that's when we get in trouble. Chris Kramer is here. He wrote the book, Pass the Test, putting God first, feeling his presence available at the Lutheran Church of Hope bookstore and also on Amazon.com. Here's what you got to realize about the election. It takes 270 electoral votes to win. Any Democrat they roll out has an automatic 104. Mm-hmm. And that includes New York California and Illinois. So you got to so a Republicans got to win a whole bunch of three electoral votes, six electoral votes, seven electoral votes. You know how many states they they have to win like 20 states just to keep up with the number that they win in three states alone. Right. So it usually comes down to play to a few states, Colorado, Arizona, um, Ohio, Pennsylvania, for sure. Florida, it's a must you have to win Florida if you're going to win. I'm asking you, what states can Cruz win that Romney didn't, that, that could, could catapult? Because he's not going to win California up and the, and, and the north down. All right, Chris, thanks for being here today. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Come back again and share part of your book when it refers to something going on. In a minute, Heather, She's fighting City Hall, and I want you to hear her story. It's important, and it's next, live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. 
I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the service manager. Marketing director and client relations manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fix them the problem today. If they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Twenty-two minutes before five o'clock, five o'clock Salem Radio Network News, and then Hank, the Bible Answer Man. One eight 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 ask Hank. You can call. You gonna call him today, Frank? I don't think so. Your daughter doesn't like Hank, does he? Does no, she? she's uh, uh, Hank is on her poo poo list because uh, she because he beats up Soul Sleep and some other things, and she doesn't uh, she doesn't like uh, him beating up on that. Well, I'm glad she still listens to him because there are a lot of things to learn, kind of like you. A lot of what you say is poo poo, <laughs> but every once in a while you say something that's just about on the brilliant a level. A nugget of wisdom. That's right, a nugget of wisdom. We the, call them now. The day I told you that God compelled you to let it go, He didn't force you to let him go. Remember that? Mm hmm. <laughs> no, I don't. All oh, right. okay. I want to introduce you to a lovely young lady by the name of Heather. Heather is a wife, a mom. Not a mom. Not a mom yet. Mm -mm. All right, wife. Yes. And you live in a community surrounding Des Moines, and we're going to name that community because we're talking about a specific bond. But the point that I want to make is this is happening in every town in the listening listenership of, of, of my radio station and radio stations all across the country. And this is the government's manipulation of forcing us into bond issues that ended up crippling us, handcuffing us into taxes we can't afford. Yes. All right. You're from Earlham. Yep. Tell me about this specific situation. Well, our school is making a third attempt to pass a multi-million dollar bond 
to build a uh, com competition gym and replace modular classrooms. The problem is, is this is their third attempt. It's been voted down twice within the last two and a half years. The last time by a 61% majority said no. What does it have to do to pass? It has to have a 60% majority to pass. Someone, a 60% of people have to say yes in order for it to pass. And the last time 61 said no. Correct. So 39 said yes. Correct. Okay. Correct. So the first attempt uh, was in September of 2013 and I found out about it and I just kind of put some flyers together and went out door knocking in my community. Me and a friend did just let people know that this was going on, how much it was going to raise our taxes, and the fact that we didn't feel it was justified because our enrollment was down, and it was money we, we didn't need to spend because we were still paying off our new football field. Okay. If we waited five years at the time, we would have been able to do this brand, this brand new project with no tax increase just by waiting five years. Now, help me... Earlham has a, its own high school, its own school district. It's a community. It's its own community school district. K okay. through twelve. K through twelve. And so this is one property with K through twelve. Correct. And they want to add a new gym. Correct. Do they have a gym now? Yes. Is it okay? Um, they think it's too old. <laughs> That's what people say about me. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I just want to say right now, is that my group, myself and my group, are not opposed to this project in and of itself. We're just opposed to the timing. Um, in three years now, the, the football field will be paid off. We can do this entire project without a tax increase. We are, aren't even using the modular qu classrooms right now with students. Our enrollment is dipped so low. So it's just not fiscally responsible. Modular classrooms would be like trailer houses? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Um, so enrollment's down. Yes. The gym isn't dilapidated. It's just, quote unquote, in some people's mind, too old. Old, and they don't feel it seats enough people. In a reduced enrollment. Yes. Do you see enrollment going up in the area? Um, the prediction is no. Okay. I, obviously, I love my community. I love my school. I, I want it to go up. But we're struggling with academics right now. We're on the watch list for reading with the state. Okay. A couple years ago, when we were fighting the spawn the first time, we were on the watch list for math. So it, I, I just want us to put the first things first and focus on that. Heather is her name. She lives in Earlham. Now, it could be Altoona. It could be Pleasant Hill. It could be Ames. It could be Boone. It could be Fort Dodge. It could be Clive. It could be West Des Moines. Our cities are constantly, either through the school system or through the cities, asking us to give more money, give more money, give more money. And Heather, you don't know this about me, but I get really tired of hearing the excuse, it's for the children. Yes. Yeah. It's Well, it's for the kid. Are you against our children? No, why would you go there? That's not the right question. You have to be smart enough to ask the right question. It's can you afford it? And the people in Earlham say, yes, we can afford, or not the people. The school district says, yes, we can. Yes. Frank? Is, uh, I don't believe Earlham is unlike any of the other school districts. Uh, Southeast Polk comes to mind. It, it, the stuff they do sometimes boggles the imagination. But is it, is it like the parable in the Bible of the guy who's tearing down his perfectly good barns to build some perfectly good new barns? I, I would equate it to that. Obviously, the, the other side would disagree. Um, and, and I want to be respectful of the other side because obviously it's important to them. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm focusing on... If, if we were kicking butt in education and we were bursting at the seams, I wouldn't be here, okay? But we're not. And, and the issue I have is we've already said no twice. And because state law allows government to keep coming at taxpayers every six months. Oh, my heavens. Every six months. They can bring this up every six months, basically browbeating us into submission. We have to raise our own money to fight them. So our group of, of parents and residents basically pooled our money to put together flyers and brochures, and, and we're actually door knocking to get the information out. Government just has to win once. We have to win every, every single time. time. So it's very frustrating that they can do that, and they can use taxpayer money to do it. Fund elections, fund the word, getting the word out, and we have to use our own money to fight it. When is the election? The day after caucus. This mm, Tuesday. And that's boy. another thing is that it's frustrating to us is that they're allowed to do this during caucus, which is is basically our primary season yeah. in the middle of winter. So you're disenfranchising 
a lot of the elderly, you're disenfranchising farmers, you're disenfranchising the people in the country where if there's a huge snor- snowstorm, supposed to be. they may not come in. And the, the, the problem I have, too, is that they voted to go move forward on this the week before Christmas. I think it was because they were hoping no one would notice. Right. Obviously, we, we noticed. And the other thing is, is that they only gave the community 45 days notice. So that means my friend who's serving in Afghanistan right now cannot vote on this because mm. there's not enough time to get him an absentee ballot. Do you think it's a keep up with the Joneses attitude, too? I do. Yes. Um, a lot of times in conversations, the, the, the excuse they have is that if we build it, they will come. If we have new fancy facilities, we will increase our enrollment. Parents will want to bring their children here. Look at Adel, look at Man Meter, look at you know Winterset. A lot of these comparisons, though, are districts that are far larger than ours. We only have an enro- a certified enrollment of 608 kids. Oh, my heavens. So K at, through 12? Yes. Uh, and, and only a few years ago, we built a $3 million brand new football field. Who, I, I, help me, Earlham what for football? Uh, er, Earlham Cardinals. Cardinals, OK. Mm-hmm. Isn't there a go co- cards? Go cards. <laughs> Isn't there a community close to you that you could combine the school districts to save money, or is that just a no no? Um, well, two things. One, we're kind of landlocked. Um, Van Meter, there, there's a lot of things that are too far away. And, and to be honest with you, I, I really don't want to consolidate, and and um, because I think there's um, there's benefit to having a small district. Um, but in order to have consolidation, you have to have a vote of the school board and a vote of the people mm. of the districts to consolidate. So um, actually, that is actually being used as an argument to build this facility, saying if we don't build it, we'll be consolidated. When actually in Iowa code, the only way to do that is via a vote, public vote. So Can they're they, using scare tactics. Absolutely, yes. Can they not just accept being a little fish in a little pond or a little fish in a big pond? Uh, they, they, I mean, is there is there was an old saying in it, your your eyes is bigger than your belly. When I when you put too much plate on your when you put too much food on your plate, your eyes are bigger than your belly. Is that the what's going on there? That- it, it it appears to be to me to be that way because otherwise, why wouldn't you want to wait three years? Um, you know, with it declining or it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it makes sense to wait until one thing's paid off so you can pay for the other thing. Right. Obviously, if if there was an emergency, like we had 60 new families move into Earlham and we needed the space, I mean, right. that would be a completely different story. Or we were having open enrollments because parents were clamoring to get into our school because our education was top notch. Um, that would be a completely different story. And I would be 100 percent behind this. How many, you, you said that the argument is that the gym doesn't hold enough people. How many people does it hold? Do you know? uh, a little over 600, I think. So, yeah. Six or 700. You got... But we have a very de- we have a very sense. dedicated fan base, though. So. Well, but still, that doesn't just tell the uh, the visitors they can't come in. They have to sit outside. <laughs> well, all right, we're going to take our break. <laughs> Heather is here, and she and community uh, citizens in Earlham have pooled their own money to try to stop the government from coming in and taxing them once again on a bond issue. This could be going on in your community. Is it? 244 0077. It's your voice we want to hear in Max World, live on the truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. 
Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. All right, 10 minutes before 4 o'clock, or 5 o'clock, 10 minutes before 5, 4.50, and we are live here in Max World on 99.3 The Truth. Um, our guest is Heather, and she lives in Earlham all your life, or just some of your life? Ten years. Ten years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the government, the school district, um, the government schools, not the public schools, the government schools. You must change your language if you're going to understand who the enemy is. It's like our president will not say, what is it that he won't say? A uh, uh, radical terrorists radical terrorism islamic terrorism islamic terrorism jihad radical jihad etc yeah let, let's call this a school district as any school district not i'm not just picking on earlham every school district is a government school it's not a public school it's run by the government it's the government that takes god out of schools it's the government that took a bible out of schools it's a government that told us it was okay to kill unborn children that's the government now, this is the third attempt by the Earlham School Board to pass a multi-million dollar bond. Here's what the bond will do. It'll raise property taxes for 20 years, a dollar per thousand taxable. So if you own a $150,000 home, your taxes are going to go up $150. That's unreasonable. That's taxable value. That's taxable value. Because there's a value. rollback, so you have to take that into consideration. But yes. It will eliminate a large property tax decrease coming in six years will only allow a small token payment on principal for the first five years. We can't even afford the full principal payments now. It'll increase our debt. It'll prioritize athletics over academics. Two-thirds of the project is dedicated to a gym expansion. It will replace the modular classrooms, which are not even in use by students anymore. And it'll cost $188,500. They were only built to last 20 to 25 years. Well, but how old are they? Nine. Nine. Here's what the bond will not do. It will not start normal principal payments until 2022. It will not add much classroom space. It will not improve academics. Over 42% of our students are testing below the 65th percentile. And over 26% are testing below the 50th percentile. We are on the state watch list due to low reading proficiency. It will not increase enrollment. Enrollment is far below the 2007 high when the modulars were installed and continue to decline with more students open enrolling out, out of the district. And it will not significantly improve security, provide a FEMA rated storm shelter or increase and improve parking. No savings, private money or grants have been raised to put towards this project. Our school district has already laid off teachers and raised property taxes $1.33 per thousand dollar taxable value now it's not that you're against the project no it's timing it's timing in fact if earlham waits three years after the football field is paid off in 2019 you can avoid another large school property tax increase on top of the one we just had we can do this project earlham you can do this project with the local sales tax revenue and have little or no property tax increase we can also keep our scheduled property tax decrease coming in six years this is not a need please vote no on february 2nd the day after the caucuses voting is at the earlham community building seven in the morning till eight at night or vote early through february 1st and that would be tomorrow only at the madison county auditor's office in winterset now you said that you've gotten threats you've been talked to I've 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 been called all kinds of interesting names that I'd rather not repeat. Um, I had somebody today uh, um, tell me to be careful, or I'll be sued for libel. Um, that's a, that's a new one. Um, the, the issue here that, that doesn't fit. Uh, 
the thing is, we actually have a website where we post all the data, third party data to support our assertions. I mean, from the school itself, from the Department of Education, from the bond, bond people, from basically none of this is our stuff. It's all stuff we got from other people. Um, the frustrating thing for me now is two weeks before the bond vote, our school hired a $4,000 financial planner to create a budget that shows that the property taxes won't go up. Which isn't true. Well, the problem is, is I'm, I'm a numbers girl. Um, they assume that the state's going to approve a 2% supplemental aid for the next 20 years. They assume that our benefits are going to be cut in half for the mm -hmm. next 20 years when they are going up. Yeah. And they assume only a sal salary cost increase of only 2.5%. That means teachers, you're, the most you're going to get is 2.5%. And then it also assumes that um, we'll reduce our general fund so we can afford this. Well, the general fund is what funds our education. That's where the money comes out for teachers, benefits, school supplies, textbooks. They want to reduce the money going into that fund so they can offset it to pay for this. So taxes don't go up, quote unquote. It, it, it's just a, it's just misleading. It's a farce. And it just makes me very angry that all this vitriol is because we want to wait three years. That's it. It sounds like fuzzy math. Remember it, that? It is fuzzy math. And it's going to get worse now that we have Common Core math. But um, I luckily was not raised under Common Core math. And um, I manage $6 million budgets where I work, forecasting is an important thing we do, and we do not predict rosier assumptions. We always go by what historical numbers, and historical numbers do not support what they're saying. So, you know, at first they said it's gonna be a tax increase, they couldn't win that argument, so then they spend taxpayer money to hire a financial planner to do fuzzy math. And it's frustrating to me, because all this is our money. This is my money. I'm paying for this election for a third time. And it doesn't help that they can do this every six months under Iowa code. And they can do it forever. Forever. In fact, um, one of our, one of our uh, parents overheard the superintendent say it takes at least five times for a bond to come up before the taxpayers finally give in. So basically, that's taxpayer abuse. We're browbeating. We're being browbeaten. And, and, the, and the state allows it. It's not fair. All right. If, uh, you, what's the website? EarlhamCitizens.com. EarlhamCitizens.com. You should check it out. Doesn't matter whether you live in Earlham. You could live in Boone. You could live in Pleasant Hill. You could live in Clive. It doesn't matter. This is happening everywhere the government schools and the city bonds. The city gets a chance to put bonds in. I love my people who run Clive. I live in Clive and I have a business in Clive. Dennis Henderson is probably one of the best city managers ever in the world. But they tried to put a bond on us to build a new city hall. We don't need it. You don't need a new gym to hold more people. They've tried uh, to build a new jail in Dallas County. They've done it three times already, and it's failed three times. Yeah, but so they'll keep this trying. Is happening, yes, this is happening everywhere. And until we change the law to bring some sanity back into it, the taxpayers will be on, on the hook for all this money. Yeah, have you talked to your legislator about getting a bill proposed to change the law that it can happen every four years or three I, years? I have contacted my state legislator about the issue. Um, I know there's other people in other counties have had encountered this issue. They've contacted their legislators. So I, I'm hoping, you know, maybe, because it's not just us, the farmers get hit with this really hard too. Yeah. Especially now. Well, Heather, thanks for coming on today. I know it was short notice. The election is Tuesday. Earlham, think and listen. They're trying to take your money. It's the government schools. It's not people who are trying to educate your children better. They're just trying to raise taxes so they can have your money to spend freely as they wish. And if you're a state legislator in that area, look into it, would you? Heather, thank you. Frank, thank you. Ryan, thank you. Bob, thank you. I'm J. Michael McCoy. Until we meet again, remember tonight, go home. Think of somebody you need to forgive and forgive them. Because as you forgive, you shall be forgiven. I'll see you in church.